don't yes, talk. Sir. You don't talk sick. No, you talk right. 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 <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not denying that I'm fighting something in my yeah. body. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm here. God. James 5 16 says confess your faults yeah. one to another uh -huh. and pray for one another that you may be yeah. healed. Yeah. Then it says the effectual uh -huh. fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel 10. Be happy would you say amen? Amen. I'm going to go ahead and read for the sake of time. It says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. Notice what it said. The thing was true, mm -hmm. but the time appointed was long. Was long. Okay. Pay attention to that. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel was in mourning. Some texts say he was in fasting for three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hiddekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked and beheld a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold, his body also like barrel, his face like lightning, his eyes as lamps of fire, his arms and feet like polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I alone, and I, Daniel, saw the vision alone. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone, mm -hmm. and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. In other words, Daniel could not keep standing. Mm -hmm. Yet I heard the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. He touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand, and he said, Daniel, O oh, Daniel, a, great, a man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. Mm. For unto you am I now sent. Mm. And when he had spoken this word, I stood trembling. He said, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, your words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Yes. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord, and the Lord bless the hearers, readers, and doers of his words. This is Jimmy Piscon. Sure. 
Tuesday night, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, preaching. Okay. And the Lord birthed a word out in my belly, which has fallen in line with the other things that God has been saying in my heart for quite a while now. Um, and even as we came into Bible study on Wednesday night, it popped back up in Bible study Wednesday night. And Lord, we like to have church down there in Bible study on Wednesday. I had to hold back because I felt like preaching in there Wednesday night. But the word of the Lord, and I, I sought the Lord even yesterday, and I saw them even this morning. I said, God, what am I supposed to say to your people? Uh -huh. And he would not release me from that word because somebody needs it. That's right. Amen. So this morning, if you will indulge me for just a few moments, I want to share with you from this thought, and I need you to repeat it with me if you don't mind. Touch somebody around you and encourage them and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Pray, pray that thing through. Pray that thing through. Tell somebody else on the other side, maybe the first one didn't hear you, so tell the other one. Say, neighbor, neighbor what I need you to do, what I need you to do be, committed be committed to pray that thing through. In Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7, on down to around 12, 13, we are introduced to a concept called the ask, seek, and knock principle. Jesus says to his people, he says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find, knock, and the door will be open unto you. Uh, I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that most of us do pretty well, or do at least okay, with the first one. We don't do too bad with asking. Right. But the challenge becomes when we ask, and it seems like God didn't answer. Is there anybody in here who has ever prayed a prayer? You've talked to God, you've asked God about some things, and it seemed like God just did not answer you. Sometimes, you know, we've been taught in church that many times God has it on delay for this reason or for that reason. Sometimes, you know, we understand that, you know, God puts us in holding patterns because he's getting the thing ready for us. You know, let me break it down. Women, y'all get to praying for husbands, and sometimes God seemed like he hadn't answered you, but God's getting the husband ready for you. Hello, somebody. You, God's, God's getting it ready for you, and then sometimes God delays in answering you because he's getting you ready for it. Amen. Amen. That could possibly be the case. And that is because God is committed not only to you being a Christian, but he's committed to your maturity. Yeah. He's committed to you becoming mature in your walk with Christ. So many times he's not going to give you what you want in the time that you want it because he needs you to develop in a realm called prayer. Yeah. Understanding that prayer is one of the key elements and key components of the life of any believer because you can't learn, number one, your identity if you don't have communication with your father. Right. Hello, somebody. Yeah. 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 See, even in the natural, even as natural men and women, you don't know your, you don't really truly know your full identity. I don't care if your if your daddy walked out of your house, yeah. left you and your mama and all of them, and your daddy wasn't around. You might come up and you might be a wonderful person, but the reality is, at the end of the day, you don't know the fullness of who you are unless you know something about your daddy. Lord, I don't have a talk that church. You don't get the fullness of who you are. I mean, you may still be great. I'm not saying you can't accomplish great things, but you, it's important that you your identity is based from your father. Amen. That's right. It's naturally true. Whether you're going to be a male or a female comes from your father. Your last name comes from your father. At least based on tradition, it's supposed to. I know times have changed and we do things differently now. 
child, but traditionally speaking, the last name comes from the father. And that's why when a wife gets married, when a woman gets married to a husband, she takes on the new last name because that man carries that identity. And so the problem is if we don't spend time talking to our father, we don't know our identity. Not only do we not know our identity, can I take my time and work? Yeah. Come on, come on. Not only do we not know our identity, but we don't know what belongs to us. Yeah. You know, if you bore the last name Gates and you happen to be related to Bill, maybe if you were one of his kids, you would not know if you didn't talk to your father what, but what benefits were available to you. I mean, Bill Gates is one of the richest men in the world. But if you were one of his children and did not know what was available to you, you'd walk around like a poor man. And that, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, is how many of us walk around as believers. Because we don't take the time to talk to our father. Yeah. So we have the principle of the ask, and you would think... Just with the ask, you got to stop and think for a moment. Why did he put ask, seek, and knock in the same sentence in Matthew chapter 7? Because sometimes just an ask isn't going to be enough. No, oh, I wish I had somebody right there. Yeah. Sometimes just an ask won't be enough. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that that's what we've done. We've asked God, and then when we don't feel like we've gotten what we needed, we back off the thing and we say, you know what? Forget it. Yes. Or we say things like it just is what it is. Yes, or we say things like, well, it's just in God's hands. And I'm not saying don't put it in God's hands, but many times that's our cop out. Uh oh, I can't get no help right there. That's our cop out for not taking the time to press and be committed in our prayer life. We just say, oh, it's in God's hands. And if God wants to do it, then God will do it. But God, in order to activate many things in the earth, needs your voice to do it. I can't hear a talk back to church. Let me say that again. In order for God to activate many things in the earth, he needs your voice to do it. So my question to you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is what have you not been saying? What have you not been using your mouth to produce in the atmosphere. Mm. He says, ask, seek. I don't want to hang out here too long, but he says, seek. Now, y'all understand, seeking means y'all ever lost something in your house. Yeah. You go and you turn over. If it's important enough to you, oh, I said something right there. If it's important enough to you, now, if it's something you can just go buy another one of, uh, Brother Robert, it doesn't bother you. Just, you're like, okay, I'll look for it for a minute. After that, man, eh, forget it. You go buy another one. But if that thing is important, let's say it's an heirloom in your family. Maybe it's your grandmama's ring or maybe it's your daddy's favorite tie. Oh, you will turn over the entire house looking for that thing because it is that important to you. My question to you today is how important are the things of God to you? Are you willing to turn over some stuff? Oh, talk long. We don't pick up our Bible and seek out what is available to us. Seek out the answers that God has provided for us. We don't turn stuff over. We don't turn over the pages of our Bibles to see where our answer might be. But ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, he didn't just say ask, he said seek. Ah, oh, if you're going to get it, you're going to have to seek for it. Yeah. 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 There are some things you're going to have to seek for. And then the third thing says, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Yeah, knock, and the door. Now, the, the principle of that word knock in that text is not just one time. No, 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 no. It's not just a one-time knock. It's knock and keep on knocking. Somebody said, pray that thing through. Yeah. Oh, you got to learn what it means to knock and keep on knocking. I, I know what the old saints used to tell you. They used to say, don't keep going back to God with that same old thing because that means you don't trust him. No, that's not what that means, uh, Grandmama. It now means 
the way I pray when I go back to him and I say God I'm coming to you because I believe your word God I'm coming to you because I'm standing on your truth God I'm coming to you because you said it and you're not a man that you would lie neither are you the son of man that you would repent if you said it you will do it if you spoke it you'll make it good so God I'm coming back to you again because I'm determined that I believe you the reason why I keep coming back is because I understand that you're the only one who can do what I need to get done in the first place yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. talk to mama talk to daddy and God will sometimes let, let their resources dry up just so they can't bless you. oh God I need some help right there you got a bill due tomorrow and you got auntie in that you always call because auntie got some money but God will let God will turn auntie's heart and you around here getting mad because auntie told you no this time no don't get mad because she told you no this time she needed to tell you no this time because now you gotta learn how to you gotta knock and you can't keep knocking on auntie's door you gotta learn how how the old song say you gotta learn how to knock on heaven's door on heaven's door. Mm. And so now that brings me to James chapter number 5. In James 5 it says confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. I'm not going to go too deep into that because you know you got to be careful who you're confessing your stuff to. Amen. That's right. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Now let me say this though. In the body of Christ, we shouldn't have to live in a place where we ought to be seeking out who we go, who can I talk to, who can I pray? We shouldn't have to, but we do. Because we got folk in the church that run their mouth too much. Y'all right. not talking up in here. We got folk, you can't trust them because they run their mouth too much. If someone comes to you and confesses a fault to you, they're coming to you because they trust you enough that you're going to help pray them through the thing. That's right. Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. You need to ask God to develop you to a place that regardless to where a person, if a person comes to you and they tell you the worst thing in the world, you don't get shot, you don't get to acting crazy, you don't get to treat them stink. I can't get no help right there. You don't get to treat them crazy because they tell you something that they're fighting with or something that's a weakness for them or a fault within them. You don't fight them. You don't dog them out. You don't go spread them. Girl, you know, they told, Amen. she told me. Don't preach about it. Whether from the pulpit or from the pew, Amen. don't preach about it. We got to learn what it means to keep our mouth shut in the church. That's why people don't. You know why millennials don't want to come to church? One of the reasons why is because we talk too much. They can't confide in the grown, in the folk that's been in here a while because we run our mouths and they watch us see what y'all don't pay attention to. It's the millennials are watching the people who say they've been here for a while and they're watching how you treat one another. They're watching how you dog each other out. And so because they're watching, they don't want to come to your church. They don't want to know your God because if your God causes you to act like that, I don't want any part of it. You better yeah. pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. Come on now. If your God causes you to backbite, I don't want any part. If I'm going to get backbite, I'll get backbite in the street. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Amen. That's right. But it says, watch this, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Heal. Heal. There needs to be something in you that can bring healing to somebody else. Oh, God. I feel that thing right there. Oh, we got to get to a place where if Sister Monty comes to Sister Queen and says, Sister Queen, I need you to pray with me because I'm struck. I got, I got some faults. I got some issues. If she comes to her and says it, Queen has to be committed enough to say, Sister Monty, I got you and I'm going to help pray you through. I'm determined to see your life heal. 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 It's a sad day, First Lady, when the church don't want to see folk healed. Mm -hmm. right. Hello. Amen. 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 They'd rather dog folk out mm. than see people healed. Amen. I'm calling as a prophet of God for the day when there become some believers who are determined that our goal and our desire is to see people healed. If it means keeping our mouth shut and just praying and interceding and crying out to God on their behalf, ah, I'm calling for the day where we see people healed. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Sure. Not just 
in their bodies, but spiritually healed, emotionally healed. Do y'all not know there are people that come to church with all kinds of emotional wounds that have been they've been carrying for years? You wonder why it's in their personality. They say things like, I don't trust nobody and things like that. You wonder why they're in that condition. They're in that condition many times because of things that they have gone through and experienced in their life. And oh God, I need to work right here. One of the problems with the church is we always judge stuff from our perspective. Oh, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Well, I don't see why she didn't do this. I don't see why he didn't do that. That doesn't make sense, but you're not them. You don't know what their background is. You don't know what their family history is. You don't know why she may not be huggy dubby, huggy lovey dubby like you want her to be. Maybe she's not huggy lovey dubby because she was molested. Lord have mercy. Maybe she struggles to trust letting people close to her. And maybe you're judging her on your opinion and what she should be like or what he should be like when the reality is it's something that may have happened years ago and your perspective is different from theirs. Sometimes you got to sit down and talk to people and find out where they are. That's right. That wasn't in my notes. That was in your yes, friend. That's all. That's all. But so it starts, the text says, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. And it says, pray one for Amen. another. Uh -huh. Then it says these words, the effectual. Perfect. I'm going to start with that word effectual because effectual means effective. Mm -hmm. Many of us are not effective in our prayer lives. Why are we not effective in our prayer lives? Because prayer cannot be operated without faith. Right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm not talking about your favorite preacher on the television screen. I'm talking about you getting in and reading the word of God for yourself. Reading it out loud. Getting it down. Getting it into your atmosphere. And even getting it into your own ears. Do you not know that you learn things by repetition? So you start repeating stuff out loud. It'll come back to you. You'll get recollection from it. And, you, and in the moment when you need it the most, it'll pop back up. Anybody ever ticked you off real bad and right at that moment you were ready to go off, that scripture came back, love covers a multitude of Anybody ever been there and that scripture came up? It may not have verbally come up, but just on the inside of you, it picked up in your spirit. I'm a believer. I can't treat them nasty. I can't hate on them. I can't be mean to them. All of a sudden, that scripture came up on the inside of you. Why? Because you've been chewing on it. Mm -hmm. See? So prayer happens by way of faith. Faith comes by the word of God. And I'm coming to tell you, you ain't got to know a whole lot of scriptures just yet. Start where you are. That's right. I hope I help somebody right there. Start where you are. Learn some. Get you a few good scriptures of faith under yeah. your belt. And, and learn and repeat those things and take those things with you into prayer. I don't care if you gotta write, I'm gonna help somebody. I don't care if you gotta write them down and take them into your prayer closet with you and say, Father, according to your word in Matthew chapter 7, if I ask, if I seek, if I knock, these things will happen for me. If you gotta write them down and take them into the closet until you learn them, write them and repeat them. Amen. 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 I got to hurry up and get out your way. And so it says, the effectual. Let me add something on this effectual thing. Effectual doesn't mean you come whining. We got too many whining saints. You come into the presence of God whining. Oh God, oh God, woe is me. Believers don't talk from the place of defeat. All right, come on. We don't go to God from the place of defeat. We go to God with the knowledge that everything we need is already done. He completed the work. It's already a finished work. It's already done. 
So when you go to God, you're not going from a place of defeat, going from a place of weakness, going from a place of being down and out. You're going to God saying, God, yeah, I'm, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be honest, in my body, I'm a little heavy today. God, because of what's going on, I'm feeling a little down. But Lord, I'm looking to you. Come on, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. They were up against Moab, Ammon, and Seir. And the Bible said when they were up against three armies, Jehoshaphat went to God. He said, God, we are dismayed because of this great army. In other words, we're discouraged by this great army. We are up against some major stuff, God. And he said, but our eyes are on you. You got to get in your prayer closet and not talk from a place of defeat. Lord, based on my natural, it looks like it's not going to happen. Based on my natural, it looks like my money's going to always be like this. Based on my natural, look like my kids will never be saved. But God, my eyes oh, God, are on you. Is there anybody in here who will declare my eyes are on you? I don't know how you're going to heal my body, but my eyes are on you. Whether you do it through medical science or whether you do it supernaturally, my eyes are on you. All I know is I'm not going to be carrying this thing for the rest of my life. My eyes are on you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I don't have time to go into that, but the Bible said they, they got a strategy. Yes. One thing about it, when you go to God, you go to God, you go to God for real, God will give you a strategy. Yes. I've come yes. to tell somebody if all you got is 15 minutes a day that you start with to sit down in the presence of the Lord and spend time with him. Shut everything else off and talk to him. I promise you over time you'll begin to learn the strategies of God. I, I got some people that have been around me and they said, matter of fact, just the other day I was talking to a, a young man. He said, well, God doesn't speak to me. I said, son, here's what you do. I said, go find, go stand out in a garden somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Y'all y'all just work with me for a minute. I said, go stand in the garden somewhere. I said, look around at the various flowers in the garden. <laughs> come on, yes, come on. Sir. Yes, sir. Come on, man. I said, now when you look at the flowers in the garden, yeah. not every flower looks alike. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are red. Some might be orange. Yeah. Some might be pink. Yeah. Some are just green. But every flower, God made it. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all gonna catch me in a minute. Yeah, yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is you gotta learn to find God in the little things. And when you begin to worship God in the little things, when you find him in the little things, it tenderizes your heart. Good God Almighty. When you begin to worship God, I remember when I used to train young men to worship God and, and worship. I would take them out to the waterfall, Elder Larry, and we look at this big old waterfall and tens of thousands of gallons of water would flow over this waterfall every single day and the waterfall had not dried up. And I told them, I said, young men, I need y'all to acknowledge the God that made this waterfall. The waterfall ain't ran out yet. God have mercy. That waterfall has not run out yet. It has not run out of water. If that's not a reason to make your praises, it ought to be because your God is that big that he supplies the water for the waterfall. God have mercy. But not only does he supply the water for the waterfall, but think about all the waterfalls around the world that are still flowing and ain't stopped flowing. Good God Almighty, that's a reason to bless them. When I think of all your handiwork, the heavens that you made. Yes, yes. yes sir. Yes. Thank you, my God. Come on. It makes me praise you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And that kind of worship and adoration to the most high God will cause your heart to become more sensitive to him. Because I'm coming to tell you, there is no way you can start talking to God and saying how great he is and he not respond back.
Yeah. Yeah. Start letting them tenderize your heart yeah. by the way you worship. Yeah. Can you see God in the little things? Like somebody say, see God in the little things. You have to get ready to go. Do you not understand, ladies and gentlemen, when you do that, God begins now to open up your heart and you can hear him more clearly yeah. to get a strategy. Yeah. Jehoshaphat got a strategy. Yeah. Prophet of the Lord told him, God, you've been praying about it now. Let me tell you what you're going to do. Sing. 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 When you get done singing, God set, when they got done singing, God set ambushments against their enemy and shut the enemy down, caused the enemy to kill themselves. When you, it wasn't, Jesus have mercy, it wasn't just in the song that brought the victory, it was in the obedience that they got the victory. I need a church right there. See, we do good to sing a song, we do good to get, but we can dance, we can shout, but where is our obedience? Oh! chapter 10, the Bible said Daniel was believing God for an answer. Uh -huh. And while Daniel was believing for an answer, it troubled him because of the condition, the way the conditions were. Now it's interesting to me, ladies and gentlemen, because I told you to make a note of where it said the time, the thing was true, mm -hmm. but the time appointed was long. Oh. <coughs> the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. Yes, yes, yes. Where we miss it is because we think it's not true, because the time is long. Come on, come on, come on. Let me be clear. L O N G. Long. Some stuff ain't coming when you want it to come. Long. Oh yeah. Yes. Long. Long, my Lord. And we've not developed our endurance to deal with it regardless to how long it takes. Mm, mm, mm. I said earlier in my message today that God, number one, he's trying to develop you. Sometimes he's preparing it for you. Sometimes he's preparing you for it. But then thirdly, sometimes he's trying to develop you in prayer. He's trying to mature you. He's trying to grow you up. So he's letting you figure out what it means to get on your face and cry out for a lengthy period of time. It's not because God is sadistic. I need you to hear me. It's not because God is some mean, evil God that he's just trying to make you get down. No. Parents, talk to me for a minute. Let me help you right here. How many of you have children and you told your children to clean the room? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yes, 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 sir. You told them to clean the room. Uh -huh. Yes. You could have gone in and cleaned the room for them, but yes. you told them to clean the room. That's right. They didn't understand why you were making them. They thought you were being mean and yes. hateful. Yes. This is my room. Why can't I keep my room the way I want to keep my room? That's right. That's right. They never say nothing like that. Yes, yes, yes. No. If that wasn't your house, that was in somebody else's around. Yes. Just... <laughs> but my point is, some of them, some of the kids just knew that if they, they were crazy, they were gonna say something like that because they knew they wouldn't have tea. That's right. They they knew it was gonna be a problem. But my point is this: you told them to clean the room, even though you could have done it for them, and they had to learn the principle of cleaning the room because when they got out on their own and they needed the principle, they would be able to keep their house clean, keep their room clean. They would live in unsanitary conditions. You were trying to protect them from catching anything from germs and disease. They didn't understand it then, but it was to develop them in a habit that was good for them. Is prayer not a good habit? 
it to happen. Amen. So God is developing you to keep coming back to him and go to him and go to him. So you will become strong and you won't back down. And so now the Bible said that Daniel was in prayer and he went in mourning. He was so, he had such a care for the situation that was going on. He cried out. The Bible said he he fasted the Daniel fast for 21 days. Most of us by day three would have thrown in the towel. I'm done. I'm done. Now, prayed about it enough. I'm going to. No. Daniel prayed 21 days. Wow. Now pay attention, the seven is the number of completion. <clears throat> Three is God's holy number. Uh -huh. Three times seven is one. So even though he prayed three, technically three complete cycles of prayer, seven times three. Uh -huh. And it wasn't until the third time or on the 21st day, on that third round, on the 21st day, that's when Daniel got an answer. Uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. yes. Let me hear him. Come on, hear him. Let me hear him. And so the text says that the angel came, the, the man, it says in the likeness of a man, came down and it gave a description of who it was. And it was an angel, believed to be an angel by the theologians. And what it said, and, and most likely it was Gabriel, because Gabriel is always the messenger angel. And so watch this, ladies and gentlemen. And the Bible said, he said, Daniel, don't be afraid. When Daniel saw the man, saw the vision, he fell down and he got nervous. He said, don't be afraid. He said, God loves you. Did y'all see what he said in the text? He said, God loves you. Uh -huh. That was his first words. <laughs> greatly beloved. Verse 11, he said, Daniel, a man who is greatly beloved. In other words, God loves you. Somebody holler real quick. I'm about to bend this corner. Holler real quick, God loves me. God loves me. That's one of the biggest lies the enemy tries to tell us because of the stuff we messed up from the ways we jacked some things up from the mistakes we've made. The devil tries to tell you, surely God does not love you. Look at where you are right now. Look at where your children are. Look at what your circumstances are. Surely God doesn't love you. Daniel was in a rough situation at that moment, but he, he was actually in exile at the time it was believed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, how can you believe when you're in exile, God loves you? He could have probably gone but Daniel said, no, I'm going to stay here to use my influence to be a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, in the exile, God loves you. I'm talking to somebody to get that down in your heart. God loves you. And the Bible said that when he got done talking about how much God loved him, he said, Daniel, I need you to stand up because you've been down on your face for a long time. It's time for you to stand up. I'm talking to somebody in here. God said, because you've been on your face, it's time for you to stand up. If you can get on your face and stay on your face until God's going to give you a moment where you're going to stand up. Ah, and when you stand up, you're coming up with your answer. And the answer was, Daniel, pay attention. From the very first day you pray. Ah, y'all didn't hear what I said. From the very first day you prayed, the answer was released. He said, but there was a hold up in the heavenlies. There was a prince demon of the atmosphere over the, of the prince of Persia that was fighting, trying to keep your answer from getting through. I come to tell you, and then he goes on to say, but I had to get assistance from Michael, the warring angel, to come fight with me and fight beside me to bring me a breakthrough. And he even implies, he said, Daniel, because you prayed 21 days, that's why I'm here. So the implication is, ladies and gentlemen, that had Daniel only prayed 20 days, Daniel would have been stuck and never gotten his answer. Touch somebody and say, pray, pray. that thing through. Pray. Lord, I'm trying to close this thing. I feel it in my spirit. Pray that thing through. If Daniel had a stop at day 20, Elder Larry, Daniel would not have gotten his answer. I come to ask the question, ladies and gentlemen, how many answers have been held up because we stopped praying too quickly? How many answers did we not get because we stopped praying too soon? How many answers did we not get because we did not pray that thing through? But I came in here today to encourage every believer to get a tenacity down in your belly that says I'm going to pray. I'm going after it like a bulldog. I'm locking on with my faith. 
This is the same woman that a couple of weeks ago, her knees were giving her big time problems. Mm-hmm. Was supposed to get another surgery on one of her knees, just got done having a third surgery on one of them. Mm. Wow, my God. Hadn't been able to get on her knees to pray for years. It's the same woman standing right there. My dog. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. Now, here it is. God heals her body. Mm-hmm. Knees ain't tripped. She able to get down on her knees. Mm-hmm. Yes, and had not been able to. Came up here, what was that, the week before last? And went to kicking her legs and moving. Thank you. Because she hadn't been able to do it before. Thank you, Hope. And now she gets her testifies 30 years of medication. Mm-hmm. Remember, though it was true, mm-hmm. he said it was true, mm-hmm. but it was long. Mm-hmm. Long. Amen. Yes, you see the truth in action? Yes. Yes. It was true, uh-huh. but it was long. But she held on. Yes. Yes. Held on. Amen. Sister Joyce, let me give you one last word. Mm-hmm. God says, I ain't done yet. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. He said, pray it through again. Mm-hmm. There's some more healing I'm getting ready to release in your body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But you today have been given orders by the Spirit of God. Pray that thing through. Yes, Lord. Pray it through. Who in this room today is committed? That after today, you're going to pray. Amen. 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 That's you I'm talking to. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. 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 Pray. Our bishop needs healing in his body. Yes, Lord. I submit to you, and I'm going to get in trouble right here, but I submit that all of us have not been consistently praying for his healing on a regular basis daily. Amen. We have not prayed it through as a body. We pray, you know, when it comes to my we pray. God heal Bishop. But on the regular, daily, some of us forget. And we don't pray. Amen. We need to put that on our prayer list and pray that thing through. Amen. 